Okay guys, so in this video we're going to have a look at the chat history, so let's get into it. So the way that it looks here in like in regular Slack, we can see that there's quite a lot of features here. We have grouping and stuff like that, but I thought we'll start simple and just implement like basic chat functionality and maybe later we will add certain things to all of this where, I mean, this being all interactive, that doesn't really, isn't really something that we need, but we are going to add support for like viewing threads and stuff of this nature and like removing stuff like the base features. So this is our version of it all where we have some basic styling to kind of just get some stuff going here. So we have some text here and if I hover something we actually only have two items that we support. So being able to start a thread or being able to open like the miscellaneous or the additional actions because that's what something we're going to have to implement. So in Slack if I do something like this and I click this little thing here we'll have this little thing that drops like this modal that opens. And at the very least we want to probably be able to edit a message and delete the message. That's at least I would say the base features. So we're going to have a look at that but that's for later. And then I've hard coded some text here. Someone is typing because hey in a like a real-time chat application, we should be able to see if somebody is trying to tell us something. Cool, so let's have a look at the code. Um, let's I'll clean this up a little bit here and let's have a look here. So there's an image now, as you may have noticed. So I've added a script for just copying my, like the public images that I have to my dist folder, which is, well, basically this little chat bubble image here that we need in order to, yeah, to show it, like to just show a chat mess. I, I mean, I could have done this using CSS and uh, stuff of this nature, and it's a PNG and it's not perfect. But I thought that, uh, you know, for demo purposes, I don't. I, for demo purposes, I don't feel like I have to like create this as an SVG. But we should have made that an SVG as well to be like really performant and so forth. But this is good enough for now. And then I've added the chat module, which is great. And we can have a little bit of a look at the chat component. So here's our chat component. We have an event listener. We set ourselves as a describer. And then we have something called render post, open more actions, and open thread actions. So open thread action and open more actions is basically just these two functions that we, like, when we click the buttons, you will see these modals. As I show, like if I just click things here, it's simply going to log out the key ID or like the post ID of that element. And then we have this called render posts, which is just going to take a post and the index of that post, and it's going to set a child with the name menu dash index, so we can create one child for each of the elements in our chat, basically. And then we're going to pass that in to a chat menu component. And this is where this set child idea comes into play, with which we have talked talked a little bit, like just touched on in a brief in a previous video, where I want to be able <clears throat> to add an element to my template like this. And so in order for me to do that and still maintain the reference to that element, I felt that this was a nice way of doing it, where basically you just set the child and then we have a template string here where we can actually declare that, hey, this is where we want that to be attached. And then I just give it this property data dash child and we say menu index. And now I actually have this, like this namespace here, like this reference, this component. So what's going to happen is that internally set child is going to create this and make this into an element. And then my create element function is going to basically create this element and attach, replace this template element with the element that I'm creating. In other words, this um, chat menu here for each of the uh, of the renderings we're going to make. And then we have this, like, uh, this on event is going to be used later, so I've just created this as a placeholder, but it doesn't do anything right now. And then we have our render, which is going to render out our div, and a list where all of our rendered posts are, or like all our posts. And then we have this little message, as we saw earlier, which is just hard-coded as someone is typing, and we will later have a look at actually making sure that, hey, this actually shows when somebody is, is typing and when somebody has stopped. And then we have our chat menu, which is a very small little component, which is just a list with two elements that is going to have an on-click that references chat, open thread actions, or open thread action, and open more actions. And it's just going to take a 
like a props, like the props is going to have a post key as we saw earlier, and that's just going to be the index of this element or the, the associated post basically. And then we have, yeah, two, well, two elements here, like these triple dots here, and yeah, this is where the chat bubble lives. That's about it, really. Then I created a module or model for the post. So what's going to happen here is that we are going to, well, we can actually look at how this looks. So I just fake this for now in our like our entry point into this uh, component. And all it's going to do is that, hey, this is an incoming post that's going to come from the server. We're just faking that. And then I added a few spaces and stuff like this. And this is some just yes, base data. And then I have created all these posts. And then basically we pass in those posts to our chat component, set that chat component on the window object. We create an element or a chat node and we replace the chat element that is on the like on the document with our new node. And then we do this thing here where we take the we grab the chat node and we simply set scroll top to the, the height of the scroll of the scrollable area. And the reason we want to do that is because when if I'm up here and I refresh, I want to be like I want my viewer or like the user should be seeing the last post in this list but have the option of scrolling upwards. Cool, and that's where this post comes in. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in the incoming post. We're gonna get the created at property because we are assuming that this is going to be an ISO formatted string at this point. And then we do a split on the T and then we grab the date and then we grab a substring so we can format this date in a night like this. A little, this is a little bit nicer than just a plain date string. And that's about it really. And if there's an error, we simply return a default value of an empty string. And the same thing goes here, like default values, that's great. And then we have this thing here where we grab the text and we simply replace all our new LAN characters with break tags because hey, in in the, the browser, the way that we denote a new line or a, like a break line is with this tag here instead of new lines. And then I've just added, this is going to go away later, but this is just a little bit of randomness so that we have, we can use, uh, we can create a substring from the first element all the way to a random position in the length of the string. And as you can see here, like the, they all have, like the, these are all the same posts, like the same data, but it, they have different lengths on the content. And that's because I put a little bit of random here, randomness here just to kind of verify my layout so that it, so that it works with different lengths of text. And here is a bunch of CSS that has been added. Nothing. I don't. I'm not going to go super far into that because that's. I don't think that's all that valuable. But there it is. Added some more stuff to like some. I added a border to the header. Some global styles, new colors, that good stuff, and that's about it, really. Um, yeah, uh, so far so good. So now we have a basic chat history going and we'll move this over here and we will say that that's ready for test. And here, next is the chat input. So let's have a look at that.